So, Julie Collins, welcome to Carpool Conversations. Thanks, Brendan. Well, here we are in beautiful Tasmania. How long have you lived in Tasmania? I'm born and bred Tasmanian. I've been here my whole life. I've obviously left the island many, many times and been overseas as well as to what we call mainland Australia. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. We've got a beautiful day and obviously you, you're the Shadow Minister for Mental Health. And mental health and ageing. Mental health and ageing. And so spend a fair bit of time in Canberra. I do indeed. <laughs> About 20 weeks a year. It's a bit colder in Canberra. Yeah, gee whiz. Um, look, we're obviously here as part of our part of our conversation convoy. Uh, this, I think, is the twelfth event of a six-week tour. Uh, you, you're someone who has been really accessible to Are You OK? You're, you're obviously very passionate about mental health and suicide prevention. Uh, why do you think campaigns like Are You OK are important for Tasmania? I think it's really important to raise awareness and to make sure that people have the skills to be able to ask, you know, are you okay? And what to do then after that, the listening, the encouraging action and then checking in. I think it's really important, particularly here in Tasmania, because sadly uh, we do have very high suicide statistics. And they're not just figures, they're actually people and their families and their loved ones that are affected by it. You know, and I've seen firsthand, sadly, uh, some of the impact that that's had on individuals here in the state and a lot of my colleagues have had similar experiences. Most Tasmanians sadly have been touched by somebody uh, with mental ill health and or suicide sadly so we certainly need to do better in my view and I think that days like Are You OK and organisations like Are You OK are so important. As, as someone who, who takes, takes an active role, role in this space, you know, what do you think we can do more uh, as Australians you know, in a general sense? I mean from a from a government perspective, from a community perspective, is there anything that you think that we can do better? I absolutely think we need to do better in making sure that when people put up their hand and say I have an issue, that we have services and support for them. Uh, we do really well with some of the helplines that are available for people, things like Lifeline and Kids Helpline, but I think we need to do better with those additional services, with things like you know, psychologists, psychiatrists, community mental health, community health workers, counsellors, making sure that the services that people need when they put up their hand and say they need support are actually available. Um, you know, and I think this is a bipartisan thing. I'm not being political about that. Yep. You know, I think what we saw this morning here in Hobart is, is you know, people from all parties are there and are interested and committed. And I think we need to work together as a community to make sure that we can try and reduce the suicides in Australia at the moment because you know, more than eight people a day are currently suiciding in Australia and we need to do better than that. So as someone with, with a public profile in federal politics, how do you go when you have a tough day? Who, who's, who, who's your support network? I, I'm very lucky, you know, my partner's very supportive, my family, um, but I think it's also really important that we equip our staff well to deal with it because they also get some very distressing phone calls. I've noticed that since I've become the Shadow Minister for Mental Health, uh, my staff get um, more of a range of distressing phone calls. And so I've been working with Greg Hunt, who's the Federal Minister, and we are actually going to have some training and support available for politicians and their staff so that they feel like they've got the skills to deal with the types of people that are coming to them, uh, but also so that we have the skills to talk about uh, mental ill health out and about in the community and that we do it appropriately and in a way that encourages people to seek support. Julie Collins, you've been a really great support. I know that this is something that you're passionate about, uh, not, not just because we're sitting here with, with cameras rolling, uh, you take an active interest in, in what we're doing and an active interest in, in the sector, uh, mental health and suicide prevention space. Thanks so much for joining me on a carpool conversation. Um, are we going to try and see whether we can up the comm cars to, to an Audi Q7 from here on? Or, uh... <laughs> I don't think that that would be a good use of taxpayer <laughs> dollars, I have to say. I'd rather see that money go on mental health services in our community, as I'm sure you would too. Absolutely. And uh, on that note, I should should reiterate that these vehicles were donated by the Audi Absolutely. Foundation, which was, which was fantastic. And are you OK? Like many other community organisations, of course, also gets generous community corporate support. And I guess that's what I mean by everybody working together. You know, corporate Australia, community organisations, members of the public, people with lived mental health um, illness, you know, also yep. a really important part of this conversation about making sure that those supports that people need are there. Thank you very much. I'll find a safe place to uh, to drop you off maybe for a cup of coffee. <laughs>